guys and fellow lovers of the cubic world welcome back to another redstone video here in the channel with me george of course and this video was meant to be posted about a week ago but i got a bit busy with life and other first uh, but we are here now though and i am very excited because to make this it took me a fair amount of time actually it took me some time to design it and i went through many many design and ideas uh, which most of them were ditched by the way and then it took me some time to test the few ideas that made it to the final round per se until uh, we got it. And what am I talking about guys? Well, I'm pretty sure you already saw it in the title and of course the thumbnail of the video. Uh, but also you can get a pretty good idea by looking around me. I mean, uh, this is the very world that we used for this uh, video about the reliability of uh, that chunk loader or well, this chunk loader over here um if you haven't watched that video please do i really recommend it uh, and yeah we're also gonna be making a few references to that video in this one so if you haven't watched it you should probably click the uh little info card right right there at the top right of your screen and go watch the video then return to this one so that you are um well updated on the matter, right? Anyways, the contraption that I'm talking about is the 100% reliable shulker box loader. That's right, I finally got it working. Um, we have three different designs. Well, actually, it's really just one, but it has uh, three different main blocks that we are using for the main function of this, um, this shulker box loader. And, well, I think it got... Well, it turned out pretty great. I mean, it's it's very compact. It's one wide. It's fully tileable, and I mean, it's not as compact as that one over there, the the previous design. But to be honest, to be a hundred re uh, percent reliable, I think it's pretty compact. And yes, yeah, as I said, it's fully tileable, so that's that's a big plus, right? And well, I think in the end, it's not that bulky, really, compared to some of the designs that I've seen out there, at least. <laughs> Anywho, before we get on to the block-by-block uh, -block tutorial on how to build this design, let's talk a little bit about it, about how it works, and about uh, why is it reliable, right? So let's just start by addressing those monstrosities <laughs> back there. Uh, if you watched the previous video uh, about the testing of that shulker uh, loader, you might already know what these are, because we made a test, that one actually right there, um, before and actually let's go free cam because it's faster that way we can see all these chests down here and all these chests up here well we have a similar test here uh, on the side for this new design we have the chests down here and the chests up here and well the chests up here were well used to be uh, full with shulker boxes uh, colored shulker boxes and now they are all in these chests down here the reason why is because we tested the shulker loader in its three designs, three different designs. We can see cobwebs here. Uh, we will be able to see some powder snow in this one. And then on the third one, we just see some half slabs or slabs. <laughs> um, and yeah, they are all empty and the whole, uh, well, the complete uh, array of chests down here is completely full. So the way the testing that we did works, it was uh, we put some shulkers, actually hundreds of shulkers uh, up here in these chests, empty shulker boxes, and we color each of them with different colors. We have blue here, we have yellow, then magenta, and then we repeat blue, yellow, magenta, and what, uh, I mean, and so on. And the reason why is to know if a shulker from this uh, side jumps onto this side or jumps onto this side. Uh, to the incorrect chest, right? And well, then we use some command blocks up here. By the way, if you want to reproduce this uh, test in, uh, on your own, you can copy this command. We have the summon command, and then we are summoning an item uh, at the coordinates, the relative coordinates of the same command block, and we are just lowering by one on the y coordinate. And then we are uh, specifying which item we want. So item and the ID diamond sword. And we are just counting one, right? Which means that uh, they're going to produce one diamond sword. Um, well, every tick, really. <laughs> uh, as you can see. 
and that way we are producing diamond swords that will fill each of the shulker boxes as you can see they all stay in their in their lane per se and we are producing uh, diamond swords for each of the of the slices in this system and then we have this thing here this little clock that has this command if you want to copy it as well we have the kill command as you can see here at the beginning kill then we are uh, killing all entities that have the type item and the empty tag of the id of the diamond sword so we are basically killing the diamond swords every every four ticks or every five ticks really um redstone ticks that is so that we don't lag the game that much and we have the same test in each of the um, designs here and yeah in total we have 32 times three <laughs> command blocks producing swords so it's a lot which means that you probably shouldn't uh run this at the same time in your computer i did but i knew my computer could handle it actually when i got into this world when i tried to load it again uh, for recording the video or to record the video um i had to allocate three gigabytes uh of ram into my minecraft i originally played it with uh, with three gig gigabytes but then i updated to sodium and lithium and whatnot and i returned to two gigabytes and well now to reload this world because of all the chests all the uh, shulker the full shulkers in each of the of the chests and they're all full with diamond swords and we have those many then we have this many and this uh, two other arrays of chests so I imagine it's a lot, which means that I had to allocate one more gigabyte of RAM to my game. And that's already counting. I have sodium and lithium. So yeah, <laughs> just be warned if you want to reproduce this test at home, right? Um, anywho, let's see a little bit of a footage of it working, the test working, because I did record it. And there you can see all the swords falling down from the, from the command blocks and the shulkers being filled. Um, hopefully we can get uh, to see some of the shulkers being popped off by the pistons and then gathered by the shulker, uh, by the hoppers below. This is an accelerated footage of the test because I did tick warp it. Uh, of course, my computer was so saturated that you barely can see the the speed uh, the the video speeding up. But uh, yeah, it is sped up in the end. But anyways, let's see how this test. Uh, turned out and by the way this looks amazing from this angle uh, so the first test is this one and we are using a special block uh, a special block the cobweb because yeah I should probably th said th say this before we actually get into the testing so each design has a different special block this first one has cobwebs the second one has a powder snow and the third one has slabs and the reason why is because shulkers, when they're broken, even if they're pushed down, because we, we got into this uh, in the last video, we saw that if we push it, the shulkers down with a piston, they actually um, break without much momentum, which means that they have less possibilities to jump around and maybe get out of the system. So yeah, as I was testing it, I discovered that they still have quite a bit of momentum. Not as much as if we push it from the side, right? If we if we did kind of this as on the other design, but still quite a bit, uh, and it's enough for it to still jump out of the of the of its lane of its of its lane of its lane. Sorry. Um, which means that we need a block to stop that and the first block I thought about was of course cobwebs <laughs> So I used it and actually the first one was powder snow. So that's the first uh, thing I did I also tried a, a few more like scaffolding or other blocks that would not have uh, That much of a hitbox that could uh, interfere with the with the shulker as the item so I tried with powders, no, I tried with cobwebs, I tried with stone cutters even, and many others, and uh, also slabs, because that, that's the one that we discovered the last time that could be of help. And well, stone cutters work very similarly to the slabs in the sense that they don't allow the shulker to fall out of the, of the hopper lane when it gets broken. 
as you can see it stays there it's a little bit pushed to the side so it could already be picked up by another hopper here on the side uh, but it's not much a, of a deal because the first hopper that we'll see it when it breaks is this one uh, we'll talk about this a, a bit more later that's why we have three different designs and well the first one is with cobwebs and i found in the test that none of these chests have the wrong shulker box inside of it none of these all of these chests have the wrong shulker box inside of it which means that with cobwebs this re design is a hundred percent reliable even if it's tiled up together like this one because if we build this design uh like just with one slice like we have here it's already 100% reliable, no matter which block we use, right? Um, but if we if we tile it up, the, the reliability percentage starts dropping. So with the cobweb, it's 100% reliable. Now, with the powder snow, we have a few mistakes. So I check each of these chests, and there's only three that have the wrong shulker box inside of it. And actually, the three of them just have one, a single wrong shulker box inside of them as you can see and well i uh, added up the results because all of these tests were done with exactly 13,312 shulker boxes being filled up and well we got a 99.98 percent reliability if we use powder snow which is already very high and if you find the cobwebs and the powder snow a bit expensive a bit on the expensive side in the game we can still use the slabs. The slabs, though, they do have some issues. As you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six chests that have the wrong shulker box inside of them. Uh, still, each of them just have one, a single wrong shulker box inside of them. As you can see, uh, this one is that one. This one has a blue one, a magenta one, and a yellow one. And yeah. Tidying up the results and counting them off and, um, I mean, taking the average, we got a 99.95 percentage of reliability, which is not bad still if you are a bit, um, well, if you find expensive the, the powder snow or the cobwebs, which I don't think it's that expensive, really. Cobwebs you can get a lot of uh, from the mine shafts. And then uh, powder snow, you can farm it very easily. It takes a while, but it's very easy to get uh, your hands on a lot of powder snow. Uh, but if you don't have those resources, you can always use the slabs. The simple uh, answer, of course, at the cost of uh, how much? 0.05% <laughs> of your reliability of your shulker loader. And uh, that's if you, if you tile it up. Right, because if you only build one slice and then separate it by one or two blocks here, right, and then build the next slice, you're gonna have 100% reliability no matter which block you use. If we were to do the same uh, with the with the frog lights and to mark all of the mistakes or all of the chests that have a mistake inside of them with the previous test, the one of the previous video, we would see something a bit like this. Wow, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, we can. I, I think we can uh, see more frog lights than we can see chests. Uh, it does make for a good random pattern, though. Um, but it also is a great representation, a great ra graphical representation of how much difference can a few percentage points make um, over large uh, numbers or large quantities. Um, yeah, I think I think it's it's cool, and most of these chests that are um, that are uh, marked with a frog light actually have more than one wrong shulker box inside of them. So yeah, you can see how much improvement we have uh, from this design to the new design that we just made. And some final little things about the design about how it works before we get into the tutorial i'm so sorry guys <laughs> i know this is a lot of explanation it's a lot of uh, statistics math and whatnot but i'm sure a few of you will will um appreciate this so the way this design works is we have the shulker here in the middle of course and well the thing is to keep a design one way tileable we cannot add things to its side right so we have this shulker here the, uh, we need to 
pop the shulker with a piston. We need to dispense the shulker. We, we, need, we need to be able to dispense the shulker with a dispenser. We need to catch the shulker with a hopper. In this case, we have the hopper two blocks down so that we don't suck everything that's inside of the hopper um, instead. And then we have a cobble here. And we need to be able to put items into it, which means that we already used up our four sides of the shulker box. And can you see what's missing in, in this shulker box loader? Well, of course, we need to read if the, shulkers, if the shulker is full already. <laughs> so, yeah, how do we do this if we cannot add things to either of these sides? Well, there's a pretty neat trick that I discovered um, when I was playing with shulkers a long time ago. I actually have another video on this. Um, uh, I, I, I realized that we can actually read this hopper instead of the shulker. And well, this, shock, this hopper, whenever it gets items inside of it, uh, the comparator sends a signal, right? But um, kind of similarly to what we would have in a in a sorter, in a, an item sorter, the comparator can only read items as they pass through the hoppers. And if the items are stackable, we only get one redstone signal, which means that if we extend the redstone line, we can actually uh, fill the hopper with items, and the more items we get in here, the more uh, strong this signal would be. So if we get to 23 items, well, 26 is the same, we actually get the signal up to here, which means we, that we can have a way to read when the shulker is not accepting any more items. So if the, hop, if the shulker is already full, the hopper is going to start filling up uh, up to 26 in this case, and whenever it happens, we can now break the shulker and dispense a new one, which will allow this number to go down by one. Um, if we are not getting any more items from the from the top of this uh, hopper, maybe from a farm or whatever, uh, this, uh, this number will start dropping down to zero and the thing will be reset, right? So we are using this here. Now the problem is, actually let's replace that. The problem is, uh, this is for for six uh, for items that can be stackable to 64 right now here you can see that we are using more than two pieces of redstone for this design that is because if we were to do this whenever we actually let's test it right whenever we placed a non-stackable item for example a diamond sword as we did in the testing we are gonna get yeah the whole uh redstone line <laughs> powered so yeah, this power will extend up to three blocks. As you can see, this one is already powered already. Uh, I mean, as well too. Oh, sorry, I got <laughs> I get jumbled with my words. This redstone dust is uh, also powered, right? Um, but if we do a fourth one, this one already won't be able to reach. Which means that we can have non-stackable items also passing through this hopper. And whenever the shulker doesn't accept any more items, we're going to get it to fill to two items, two non-stackable, and then we will get this, um, this redstone dust to, pow to be powered. Then in the system, we have this repeater here that will we'll, uh, get powered whenever we have the second non-stackable, um, which means that uh, this hopper up here that will provide items to this hopper uh, below will be locked, which means that it won't send any more items. As you can see, they get stuck. Whenever this uh, repeater gets some power, then it can send items through. Um, so that's what we are using here in the system to be able to detect when the shulker is full. Unfortunately, because we have to do this uh, compatible with non-stackable items, we are going to have to use 64 plus a bit. I don't remember quite well how much was it. Oh, we can actually test it. We place the repeater here and then we fill this with items. We'll see when it stops. Right there. Okay, 64 and 5 items. It's what we need if we are using uh, items that are stackable to 64. If we are using items that are stackable to 16, then it's a bit different. Oh, let's actually remove all those items. Because um, we can have up to, let's see. 16 and 2. So uh, a second and, and two items of uh, items that are stackable to 16. And of course, we, if we are using non-stackable items, we are getting up to one, or well, up to two, I guess, uh, non-stackable items inside of the system before the shulker gets broken. 
So yeah, that's the only downside that I see to this method. Uh, uh, well, in comparison to that one that reads uh, the the shulker box directly, but it works. I mean, it works. If you want to use it only for uh, stackable items, then you can reduce the system uh, quite a bit, actually. If you instead do something like no, it wasn't like that. Sorry, I'm <laughs> I'm trying to figure this out on camera because I know it's possible, but I don't remember how. Like this, okay. <laughs> you can already do this um, in this way if you are not using uh, non-stackable items. Otherwise, I recommend that you stick with the four uh, redstone if you do not know exactly which items are gonna be uh, falling into your shulker box or if it's a mix of items, right? Um, another good thing about using this system is that if, for example, for that one, the shulker has to be completely full for it to break. So if we had a shulker box, right? And we fill it up with, let's say, barrels. And then we leave half a stack of barrels here. And then we start filling it up with glass. We get the stack of glass and no more items of glass are gonna be able to get, go, th go inside of the shulker. And the shulker will never be full because we have 32 barrels here and it has to be 64 for it to detect that it's full and be broken. But well, with this design, since no more items are going to be able to pass through, this hopper is going to start filling up and the shulker will be broken. So it's another good thing about this one, I guess. Uh, of course, the main good thing is that it's 100% reliable. Uh, and then after that, well, we already see what this system does, then this uh, redstone dust is being read by these observers, which uh, power this sticky piston, which will uh, push this observer and power this piston and the dispensers. They are both getting power at the same time, but dispensers, of course, have a tick of delay um, more than the pistons. So the piston will push, uh, will break the, the shulker box before the dispenser actually fires any shulker box and places any shulker box inside of here. Uh, then we have the hoppers here to fill up the dispenser with more shulker boxes. We have a comparator here reading this hopper and some observers reading the comparator to basically um, dispense any shulker whenever we don't have that one, which is another good thing about this design because that one doesn't have one. Um, if you want to use the, that, that design, you have to manually place your first shulker box and then have your shulker boxes, um, I mean, in stock or have many shulker boxes in stock uh, so that you don't have to replace them manually uh, if they run out. With this system, that's not a problem because if we place a shulker inside of the hopper, it will automatically uh, dispense, dispense it and place it in. Then of course, here at the bottom, we have the cobweb and the hopper that will suck each of the shulker boxes and you can connect any uh, I, uh, storage uh, system down here for your shulker boxes. A thing that I've seen that many people do with their, with their uh, shulker box uh, fillers or uh, loaders to make them more reliable is to lock this hopper and then unlock it right at the time the shulker is uh, broken. So that way we don't have the, the shulker, the, sorry, the hopper being in, in cooldown mode uh, to, suck, to be able to suck the, the shulker box. I don't think that's needed in this design because the cobweb already kind of holds the shulker box in place uh, for as long as you need for the hopper to have more space in it. Well, at least five minutes, right? Before the shulker despawns. Uh, the same happens with the, with, the, with the powder snow. And the same happens with the slab, just a bit more unreliable because if we have um, this hopper locked, then the shulkers will sit on top of this slab as long as they need uh, before, of course, five minutes uh, for the hopper to have more space in it and to be able to suck them up. But enough blabbering, guys. I know it's been a lot of things that I've said. Uh, let's get into the tutorial, which actually is going to be very short because, as you can see, the system is pretty straightforward, really. So we're gonna start by deciding, uh, as always, where our uh, our storage will be, and we'll start by placing our barrel, or um, our chest, or storage system, anything that you want for a storage system to be for your shulker boxes. Then after that, we're gonna place a hopper on top of it. Then we're gonna choose which um, 
which block we're gonna use. For the tutorial, I'm gonna use a cobweb because, of course, it's the better one. It's the it's the best one, really. And then we're gonna decide where our uh, input of shulkers will be, and we can decide if it's gonna be at the left side or at the right side. In this case, I'm gonna do it to the right. So we're gonna place a block to the right of the cobweb. Then we're gonna place a temporary block and a block below it. Um, this has to be a solid block. This can be any normal block. Then we're gonna place a repeater on three ticks. Then we're gonna place a temporary block here. Uh, we're gonna place a observer facing into the repeater and then another observer facing downward being read by that last observer. Then we're gonna place a comparator here facing outside of the system, just like so. Then we're gonna place a dispenser facing this way, uh, right on top of this solid block. Then we're going to place two hoppers facing into the dispenser. And as you can see, they touch the comparator here. Um, after that, you can grab maybe some chests or a minecart and place a rail line or anything that you like to be um, filling up your system with shulkers. In this, in this case, I'm going to use the double chest. Then we're going to place a, a, a solid block here on top of this, of this dispenser. Then we're going to place a piston facing downward right next to it. Uh, then we're gonna place a temporary block here on top of the cobweb and a hopper facing into it Just like so then we're gonna place a barrel on top of the hopper Then we're gonna place another hopper on top of the barrel facing into the barrel Then we're gonna place a temporary block We're gonna place a, a normal block below it and a solid block right uh, at its side Then we're gonna place a comparator facing into the solid block We're gonna place another temporary block and place a uh, two normal blocks. Uh, it doesn't mean it doesn't matter if they're transparent or solid, uh, with some redstone dust on top of them. Then we're gonna place a uh, transparent block. This has to be tra transparent. Then we're gonna place a normal block and some redstone dust on top of both of them. Then we're gonna place a normal block and a repeater set on uh, one tick right on top of it. And by the way, uh, this is only because since it's gonna be tileable. We have the redstone here and it can be redirected as you can see so it doesn't face the hopper so the repeater what it does is basically bring the signal directly into the hopper so um, if you want you can actually ditch the repeater and instead place a target block in there it's a bit more expensive in my in my opinion than the repeater so i prefer using repeaters so yeah with that repeater we place it there then we place a Observer facing out of this redstone dust reading it then another observer reading that last observer facing into another hopper That's gonna be facing down into the other hopper that we had just placed um, Then we're gonna read that hopper with another observer and we're gonna power with it and uh, another solid block that will uh, Power also a sticky piston facing downward right next to it then we're going to place on the face of the piston an observer facing into that hopper, as you can see. And the whole system is done. <laughs> I know, it's, it's, it's very fast. Um, it's very easy as well. And as you can see, it doesn't require many materials, really. Actually, the materials that you see right here in this frame <laughs> are the only ones that uh, you need. If you want, you can check the thumbnail. It's going to have this exact frame. Actually, let's make the thumbnail right now. There we go. <laughs> Easy peasy. And yeah, that's about it, guys. I'm thinking that you already understood that these hoppers are for filling the shulkers with items. But if you don't, yeah, you can place a chest there or maybe a water stream or a farm uh, output onto this hopper. And it's going to be filling the shulker boxes. Well, anyways, guys, I hope you like this video. That's it for... Um, for the shulker box loader, the 100% reliable shulker box loader. I'm thinking if I have forgotten anything, but I don't think so. If I did, I'm so sorry, guys. But if you have any questions, please leave, the, leave them down in the comments for me to read them. I will answer uh, any questions that you have. And thank you so, so much for watching. Um, I hope you like this design. I hope you find it useful. And yeah, I guess leave me your thoughts then in the comments. I'll see you in the next one. Uh, don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you like this video and also consider hitting the subscribe button if you would like to see some more content like the one that we post uh, generally in this channel. 
Thank you so, so much for watching. This has been Giorgio, and yeah, goodbye. Have a great week. Have a great weekend, actually, and I'll see you in the next one.